Welcome back everyone to Learning Matician. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 15.48, okay? It says, block A and B have masses of 40 kilograms and 60 kilograms respectively. They are placed on a smooth surface and spring connected between them is stretched 2 meters. If they are released from rest, determine the speeds of both blocks, the instant the spring become unstretched, okay? So we're giving in here our graph. We have, as previously, uh, mention block a and block b and they're attached by this spring okay so the first thing i like to do in this problem is just write out my givens so i'm giving out that mass of block a is equal to 40 kilograms also that the mass of my block b is equal to 60 kilograms i'm giving that the springs is stretched two meters so i'm going to write that as s and um, I have a couple of, uh, I have the, the stiffness of the spring to be 180 newtons per meter. All right, so the two equations, the mainly equations that we're going to utilize in this, in this problem is the conservation of energy and conservation of linear momentum. So, which are these equations? So it's two of them. This one is my conservation of linear momentum and this one is the conservation of energy okay however in order to know the conservation of energy at these two states we need to know what's the potential energy and for the potential energy we got two type of potentials which is the gravitational potential and the elastic potential okay so we're just using two equations however this other three is just to help me uh, finding um, this potential energy for equation two okay so now that um, we have this, well, we are evaluating this conservation of energy and linear momentum into two, basically two states. The first state is the initial state on which both blocks are at rest, right? And I'm also having a stretch length of the spring to be two meters, okay? My second state happens when I want to determine the speed and this happened at the instance when the spring become unstretched. So if we were to draw this, what we have in here is that we'll have block A attached by the spring and after that we'll have block B. However, this happened because my mass block B have a velocity going to the left and my block A had a velocity going to the right and also the stretch length at this moment is zero meters, okay? Basically meaning that the spring is neither compressed, neither stretched, okay? So now that we have this, we can start utilizing our first equation, which is conservation of linear momentum. So on the left, we're going to start with our initial state. So state one, where we have the mass is multiplied by velocity, but wait a second, block A and block B are at rest, meaning velocity is zero. So we have zero plus zero for both our masses. And this has to be equal to the mass times the velocity on our second state. Well, in our second state, we have the mass of A times the velocity of A. So mass of A, which is 40 kilograms, multiplied by the velocity of A, plus the mass of B, which is 60 kilograms, multiplied by the velocity of B, okay? So this is our first equation. And also I did a small mistake. I did not imply that going to the right is positive. And if I implied that going to the right is positive, that means that this should be a negative value because my velocity is going to the left. So negative velocity of B. Okay, since we know that it's going to our left. Now, let me try to simplify this equation a little bit more. Basically, this will give me a, the 40, the velocity of A, has to be equal to 60, the velocity of B. Okay, if we were to solve for the velocity of A, this is equal to um, 3 halves of the velocity of B. All right, so 
We got one equation but two unknowns. That's the reason why we're going to chapter 14 and utilizing this conservation of energy. So I'm gonna go ahead and for the first state we need to know the kinetic energy. Well as we mentioned before we got zero velocities and so therefore we got zero plus then we're looking for the potential energy of our first state. Okay so this is our first state and of course, we are now moving in the y direction, therefore our potential energy is not changing. We have the same potential energy in both states, so therefore this is zero. Now, however, I have an elastic, elastic potential energy because my string is stretched by two meters, okay? So we're going to account for that. We get one half the coefficient constant k, so 180 multiplied by the stretch length is square. So we're done with our potential at state one and this should be equal to, so we go ahead, and the kinetic energy at my point two. So what is the kinetic energy? Well, the kinetic energy is the velocity of A and the velocity of B. And for that, we're going to have that is one half of the mass, well, from the mass for A is 40, times the velocity of A is square, and we also have the same for my block B. So block B has a mass of 60 multiplied that by the velocity of B squared. Now we're done with the kinetic energy. We have to look for the potential energy. Now, as I previously explained, the potential energy is not changing since we're now moving in the vertical direction. And the elastic, well, we don't have any elastic energy and the problem, and, the, and that happens because our spring is not stretched. We're giving that at the instant when the spring is basically not stretched, it's at its normal length. Therefore, we are basically saying that we have plus zero, which we can either write it or just leave it implicit like that. Okay, so if we start basically simplifying this second equation, we can say the Basically, all terms are divided by one half, so I can cancel that out. Let's cross our one halves out. And if I multiply 180 times 2 squared, will give me a total of 720. This is going to be equal to 40 multiplied by the velocity of a squared. However, we already simplify for the velocity of a, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put three halves of the velocity of b, and I'm going to square this. Then I have plus 60 times the velocity of b squared. Okay, so let's keep simplifying this. We got 720 is equal to, and I'm going to multiply this 40 times three halves squared. Okay, and if I do this, this gives me a total of 90 times the velocity of b squared. We're going to add 60 times the velocity of b squared. And if we add these two guys, we will get 150 the velocity of b squared. Okay, now all we have to do is solve for the velocity of b. And in order to do that, we will have to do the square root of 720 divided by 150 in a square root. And if we plug that into our calculator, we find out that the velocity of b is 2.19 meters per second. And now that we have our one of our answers, we can go ahead and utilize this equation that we know that the velocity of a is equal to, so velocity of a is equal to 3 over 2 times the velocity of b, which we found to be 2.19. We plug this into our calculator and we will find out a total of 3.29 meters per second when we round it to two decimal places. And this should be our final answer, our two final answers. So if you guys like the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.